All right, we're back out at the lathe today. Um, it was cold this morning. I thought 27 was cold yesterday. 19 was cold this morning. So uh, got a fire going. Um, went and picked up a couple of the bearings locally that we could find. The other one's going to have to be ordered, so I'm going to order those. Um, he could order them, but then I'd have to drive, you know, 15 miles back into town to pick them up and all that, so I'll just order them myself. Um, what my plans for the day are today are, are is, is going to be to clean up the mess. We have tools laying everywhere. Um, all the big parts are off, though. The gearbox is here. It's just, you know, just gunked up and nasty on the backside. Um, all the other pieces are laying on the table. The compound is ready to be reassembled, so I've got the bearings to do that, so we'll probably reassemble that today. And then we'll store it in the wood shop. Um, I have a bigger table in the back back there. Um, it just has one simple little woodworking project on it that my nephew's building for his wife, so it won't be in the way back there. Um, we're gonna get all the tools up, cleaned up, put back up so we can find stuff once again, and then I'll get on the compound. So once I get all the tools cleaned up, I'll bring you back. All right, we're out at the table today. Um, we got all the tools put up and we're getting ready to assemble the compound and its accessories and get it put back on, get it put back so we won't damage it anymore. Um, I found a couple of things that, you know, I wasn't too happy with. Um, evidently somebody, the T-nuts or the compound nuts, bolts that, he, the bolts that held on the compound were, I'm a, we'll leave it at homemade. Um, not very well homemade. Um, instead of using a, a T-nut or what it, I don't know exactly what should be in there. I looked for a grade eight uh, carriage bolt sort of like this, which should fit in there with just slight modifications. I might, you know, make a T out of it and file down or grind down some of this uh, hump in it, and it should be fine. Certainly much better than those. If I can find some grade eight ones of these, which, you know, these should have plenty of holding power, but, but just for general principle, I think I, I would like to have grade eight in there. So, but for now, we're gonna put these in there. And if it works, well then it works and we'll upgrade it as if I, when I can get them. Of course, my local store didn't have any. So we're gonna modify these first, which um, it's all I'm gonna do is, uh, is grind two flats on the outside edges and grind a little bit off the top so it'll fit into the, the slot r really good. So I'll do that and then we'll go to start assembling. I need to clean up a little bit better in here and get some of the dust gone. I've got a selection of files. I have my India stone, got some uh, SA30 lubricating oil, um, and some brushes. And I got some, I'm a firm believer in anti seize. So I've got anti seize on all the rotating parts. So this stuff that was a pain in the butt to get apart before won't be the next time. So I'm a, I'm a firm believer in this stuff. If, if anybody's ever taken off a lawnmower blade that's rusted in place, use this stuff every time you sharpen a lawnmower blade and you'll never have that problem again. Good stuff. So let me get those two bolts modified and then I'll bring you back. I'll let you see what they look like. Okay, I believe I have the bolts made. Like I said, all I did was take some uh, carriage bolts, half by 13 carriage bolts, which I'm gonna find some half by 20s um, and more than likely we make this, but for as little as this costs, we're just going to use this for now, um, at least to hold it together. Um, all I did was grind two flats in it and grind a little bit off the top. And now it fits in the T-slot perfectly. So we should have no problem getting this part of it together. So maybe I should have squirted a little bit of oil in there, but we can get it. Ouch. Another splinter, daggone metal splinters, gotta love them. Oh, so that's that part. And those look like they'll work fine. Um, if anything, one of them was a little shorter than the other. I don't know why, what it matters. Um, I reckon we might find out why it matters here in a little bit, but either way. So those two are junk, so they're gone. Um, what do we need to do? I reckon we need to put some stuff on this uh, Put the screw into the compound first. So let me put that out of the way. Bring this over here. I'm gonna have to take those back out anyway. So now I got the uh, the bottom of the compound up, 
And um, what I need to do, matter of fact, let me go get me a brand new rag. I'll be right back. Okay. I've got me a brand new rag and I want to wipe all the dust off of that, all these machine surfaces, and I'm going to fill it with my hands. This is one place where you shouldn't wear gloves. Um, your, your hands are probably the most sensitive to this kind of stuff when you can feel every bit of raised spot in it. You can tell whether it's up or down, like right here's a down spot, and right on this edge is some ups, but you can feel all, there's an up right there. So I don't know what it is, it might just, who knows what it is. But I have a couple files and an India stone, and we're just gonna go over it lightly. So if it's just paint or something, my file ought to just dig it right off, and it did. So, you know, I'm not, I don't wanna cut any metal. I just wanna, you know, get any of the paint, or there might be some oil from the table, or, you know, stuff like that. So that's my coarse file. Then I'm gonna take my smooth file, or my fine file, I should say. And I'm going to go, go over it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I don't want to cut. I'm just kind of, you know, getting all the crap off of it. And then I have an India stone with a coarse side and a fine side. And I'm just going to rub it. And I can feel it right here on the edge. I can feel it, you know, wanting to, well, you can actually see it getting shiny. So it's a high spot right there. So. We'll just take a, you know, doesn't take but a minute. There you go, and it's gone. You can actually see some of the, uh, maybe it's flaking, hard to tell. It's used, that's for sure, but it's 75 years old, so, I, you know. We'll do the same thing on this side, and it's the same way. So on this edge, it's just a little bit higher, so. Now I'm just rubbing it back and forth. Let me get a little oil. This is uh, just standard old SAE 30, you know, lubricating oil. On this India stone. There we go. And then I'm gonna wipe it back off with a clean rag. And I'm gonna fill it with my finger and feel what I feel. The only thing I feel is some uh, roughness on the edge. But all the flat feels really, really good. Got spot over here. I'm going to do the same thing. Wipe it down really good. I don't know if you can see that flaking in there. Um, so, you know, still got some in there. That's all lower. That stuff right there is lower. So you can feel it with your finger if it's higher or lower. Now I'm going to take the fine side and put a little oil on it. I should just go get the squirt can, but I'm not. Oh, yeah. And you can feel the stone's not even, you know, that lubricating oil. It's just light machine oil, or this is SAE 30, but this is what I've always used on this stone. I got too much on that one. Let's do that again. There we go. And I don't feel any spots. You can feel it as you go through it, you know, the spots. You just lightly rub your stone over it. I'm going to put it back in its box so I don't get any more crud on it. I got a round one around here somewhere, which probably might work just for this too. And then fill it again. Oh, and you can, you can tell the difference. I mean, it is slick as can be right now. So that's done. So let's get the other part now. Well, update. let's flip this over because we got to put all the screws and stuff going on this side. All right. Got my oil. All right, now, what, these are the local, the bearings that came from the local supplier, plier. And I don't remember how this thing goes together, so I gotta pull up my picture on my phone right quick. Um, and it tells how all that stuff went off, or came off. So, never can remember how to get it off as wet, near as easy as it was putting it on. 
So, scroll down here to where that sucker was at. There it is. All right, and I'm going to prop my phone up right here. And I'm going to lay out my pieces the way they came. So it's, it's this, the screw. Let me get these gibs out of the way. The screw. And then a bearing. So there's the screw. Bearing. And then this piece here that goes there. And then another bearing. Where's the other new bearing? Right here. Ugh. Wired together. So that wire broke pretty easy. Wow. These must have been in storage for a while. All right. Then another bearing. And then the star washer here. Or the lock nut washer, we'll call it that. And then the lock nut. All right. So all that goes on. And it seems fairly simple. And the way I do it, again, we're going to put some oil. We're going to put some oil on the shaft right here. And on threads, I usually use, uh, like I said, I use a, uh, yeah, on it. And don't, you don't want to do that. <laughs> Where's my rag at? So we're going to clean it off and start over. Which I'm sure it's not the first time this thing has hit the floor. There we go. All right. Oil again. Like I said, we're oil and just up here where that, that one part slides on. And then let me get another brush here with my anisees. And I always put anisees on threads. It's just, you know, I don't like, I don't like stuff not to come off later on. It's just, you know, we, modern chemical, modern machining and chemicals, you have all this stuff. So, you know, you ought to use it. Unless there's a reason you shouldn't, which I don't know. So, all right, here's the first set of bearings. I'm going to put some oil on them. This is just SAE 30 lubricating oil from uh, probably Tractor Supply. Had it for a while. I keep it in these little uh, tote bins. These things are, I wish I knew the gentleman on YouTube where I found these things at. Because, man, these are... The best thing, it's Melissa and Doug's kids paint oil uh, jugs. Um, I ordered, I don't know, four or five packs of them. Um, and I, we, they're all over the shop. They have different stuff in them. But here, let me, let me put this on, or let me just put it down, because it's worth telling y'all. Um, they're cone-shaped. They have a place to rest your paintbrush if you need to. Um, they're cone-shaped, so it all goes in. The, 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 the lid fits tight and it's got threads. I mean, it's got a boatload of threads. It's, you're not gonna, uns you know, you're not, it takes a while to unscrew the thing. So, let me screw that back on. And then it also has this snap-on lid that's pretty tight. So I label it, so this has got 30, SAE 30 machine oil or lubricating oil in it. And it just stays on the shelf. When I need it, I pull it out. You know, if I'm doing stuff like this where I'm assembling stuff, I bring it out here. And the brush can stay on it like that. And then around the lathe and around the drill press and the, and if you, the milling machine, I have a, I went to Walmart and bought cheap cup holders. So let me get the one over here at the lathe and I'll show you. Well, the cup holder is screwed to the wall. But in that cup holder is dark cutting oil. You know, you always need dark cutting oil at the lathe. You know, and it just, you know, it just come in handy. And these are Melissa and Doug's paint things. Um, matter of fact, I see a set right up there. Let me grab that and I'll show you the pack because some of those tidbits, you know, they're hard to come by remembering all this stuff. And uh, they're dirt cheap. I want to say they're less than $10 for the pack of three. Oh, four, my, my mistake, there's four of them in here. So here you go. These are Melissa and Doug's 
spill-proof paint cups. They come in a pack of four. Um, I have, there's two more packs up on the shelf, so I have plenty of them. Um, I, I love them. I wish I could remember the gentleman, he's a machinist that I've seen them on uh, YouTube because they, they, these things are awesome, just awesome. So when I ordered them, I ordered them, I don't know, five packs of them. And in the wood shop, I use them for glue. When you're, um, when you're gluing up boards and, you know, a lot of little as assembly stuff, it just comes in handy. All right, so back here. Enough of, that was my advertisement for the day. So we're back on this now. So we oiled up the Baron. Oh, yeah, she's good to go. So it goes on first. All righty. Then... This, where's my picture at? I'm pretty sure it's this locker ring. So we're gonna put a little bit of oil because the bearings go right in there. And we're gonna do it on the shaft. And then it goes in just like that. And it spins like really, really good. Okay, that's that. All right, now I need my picture to come back up. I'm pretty sure it's another set of bearings. It is. So we'll open that up. Put some oil in there. You know, I'm not using a ton of it. I'm just getting them all coated. Um, watching Keith uh, Rucker redo his lays, you know. There we go. And then that goes on there. And it spins really good. So then the uh, star washer goes on with the cone shape. Oh, this way. So it has a key. So let me find the key. Oh, come on. You came off. I know you're going to go back on. Or it should. Maybe I should have ordered new ones. Of, there we go. Should have ordered new ones of those if I knew where to get them. And then, all right, this is a roll, uh, one of those threading things. So we're definitely going to put a little bit of anti-season there. And it doesn't take a lot. I mean, I usually just get it on the end thread. And then, uh, you know, the normal, the normal screwing it in. I mean, you're not talking a lot of space that you're trying to fill up. But, man, it makes things go together way easier. All right. There's that, and then we're going to screw that together. If I can get it on square, which is always a challenge when you got a keyway and a 75-year-old thread. Come on, baby. Oh, what do you know? Look at there. It goes on good. All righty. Then I know I need to get a pair of pliers and since I don't have the right wrench for that. So let me grab a pair of channel locks. All right. So let's try it. Third time's a charm, right? So I went ahead and bent all those little locking tabs in. I think that's the only thing that was holding me out. So look at there. Like butter. So now this screws in. Of course, my hands are all greasy and oily. But it's going in. Oh, slowly. I... All right, so where's my... So we're going to do it this way with a rag over it because I don't want to mess it up. My hands are just my hands are just oily. That's the only reason I'm doing it this way. If I had a daggone spanner wrench, I'd be using a spanner wrench that fit it, but I don't. You know what, I could get down there where that's gonna be covered up, right? Nope, that's part of the shaft. It has to be up there. So, I'll be gentle. And if I put a scratch in it, I'll polish it out. Hmm. Need some brass pads for this thing. You know everybody on the YouTube is going to be laughing at me saying, that's not how you do that. But it's mine and that's how I'm doing it. So, wait a minute. I wonder if I can get this in there. 
Let me grab another, another punch here that'll fit in there. Duh. Huh. Sometimes your brain engages and you can think through stuff. So, so there we go. That works too without making a scratch on the thing. That zero mark, I hopefully ends up because that's all right. So let me flip it up. Oh, look at there, right where it's supposed to be. So let me give it one little final little snug snug. <clears throat> Might even hit it with a hammer. Now I know it's snug. So there it is. That's all nice and done now. Oh, look at that. Jeez, like butter. So we'll do that. And then the gib can go in with its adjustment screw. It's That's number 17, which is this gib right here. And it goes in like so. You know what? I'm gonna rub that on the um, India stone and get any edges on it. I feel a couple burrs right here on the edge. So. Let me do that, and then we'll be back. All right. So, all this is on now. So let's slide this gib in. Like I said, I India stoned it really good, and it goes in right through here. Well, it feels so smooth. Wipe it down one more time, and put another light coat of oil on it. There it goes. All right. And then the bolt that goes in here is not the prettiest thing. And I don't know exactly why it's made like that. But it's what was in there. So we're going to put it back. I'm going to stand this up where I can see it a little better. Antices. Don't forget the antices. Like I said, it doesn't take a lot. But these things, these were the hardest out of all the bolts to take out. These were the hardest. So, you know, and these are your adjusting screws. So, I don't think they should be hard to take out. So, I'm going to flip this up. And so, I, just so I can get to it a little better and go grab my straight screwdriver. And I thought I had laying here, but I don't see it. So, let me grab it right quick. Now maybe you can see in there. So the gib was, uh, let me just start over. Not gonna, not gonna hurt to start over. So on this gib, there's a little shoulder. And I was wondering, I was kind of concerned that the, the shoulder on the bolt wouldn't go onto that that gib. So what I do is I'm going to just not push it in there so far and just make daggone sure that the shoulder of that screw is doing what it's supposed to do. If not, we're going to have to maybe make another screw. Well, it looks like it's going to. So, so the gib's oiled really, yeah, it's pushing it down. The gib is oiled really good. I have um, anti-seize on the uh, bolt head and I'm not going to tighten, I'm just going to tighten it down you know, probably about right in there somewhere. And I want to make daggone sure this thing ro rolls free and then we'll do the final adjustment later on. And that's my wife, so let me answer that. We'll be back. We're back. My wife is on, and her girlfriends are off on a wine tasting tour this weekend, so <laughs> she was calling to check in. So what we're doing here, now we're getting ready to mount the compound to the angle plate so we're doing the same thing we're just going to take the big file and we're going to knock down the high spots which you can see them all around the edge here so we're just going and knocking down all those burrs and 
and we, you know, just trying to save from scratching, I don't know, from scratching and grabbing. We're just trying to make things operate a little freer. So I wish I'd remember, paid attention which holes those bolts came out of because I really don't remember. Oh, well. Might find some pictures of it later on. All right, there's that file. I'm going to wipe it down with my hand. I'm going to go over it with a finer file. You can feel every high spot. It's funny how you can feel it. Now I'm going to put a little oil here. And I'm going to get the India Stone. We're going to do the same process all over again. So we just rub it on everything. We're, all we're getting, trying to get them burrs off of there. down get all that crap off of there and then we're going to switch to the other side got some grease on the stone there I'll put a little more oil and it's already gliding like nobody's business so Alrighty, we're going to call that piece done. Look at all the, you can see the flaking in it again. So, you know, might, might need to oil it down a little more. Might even see more of that. I don't know if you can see it there. The, you can tell where I'm hitting the high spots with the stone and it's leaving the low spots. And it looks like when they used to do the flaking in the thing to create the uh, gap for the oil. So it looks really, really, really good. I'm thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly impressed. All right. These holes are the nasty ones. So those holes right there must have been the ones that had the bolts in it. So, All right. So we'll do this. We're going to set this sucker off to the side a little bit and grab the other plate. Take them screws back out. So let me put that right there. Move the telephones here. Grab this plate. Oh, I'm going to do it this way. Get my homemade studs out of the way. And let's file it. So the only high spot I feel is right here. Right there in the middle. So somebody put three dimples on there too. See that? So I don't know what that's for. I usually mark stuff with one dimple on how it goes on. So. See, I, can, I take the file right across it and I can feel the high spot right there. That's the only spot I feel. And you can see the shiny that it left. So, you know, it, you know it's high. And it's, it's just a burr from, from that or, you know, people messing with it. I don't know. So, there we go. There's that file. A little bit finer file, which is not doing anything. And then I'm going to grab my stone one more time. And I'm going to do the same thing. Oil and stone it. it down flip to the fine side I don't feel anything now not even the middle part so I think we got all those okie dokie I'll put that up I'll try to keep that in the box so I don't screw it up because my luck it'll hit the floor and I'll be buying another stone all righty so I'm going to fill it with my hand. There's some, you know, it's got an edge on there, but 
No, nothing too bad. So, all right, we're gonna put our homemade homemade uh, cross slide bolts in here. I mean, uh, compound bolts. That one acts a little tight. Let's rotate it around. Maybe one side's looser than the other. No. There we go. You know what? Let's put a little oil down in here. Definitely not going to hurt. I might not have been able to get all the crap out of there. The purple power. Might as well oil this up. While we're here. Definitely not going to hurt the oil, that's for sure. If anything, it'll keep these bare, these machine surfaces from rusting, so we'll oil up everything. Alrighty, so that's the nut side, so that's the far side that goes this way. Alright. Hope this goes on easy. We'll see. There. Come on now. That's all I need to do is smash your finger. Oh, looky there. That went together rather well, except I don't think those were the holes that was in. So we're going to lift it back up, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I got too good of a fit. That's the holes they were in. Wasn't it? Well, maybe it wasn't. There we go. So let me lift this up. I'm gonna have to reach under here and grab that one. There we go. There we go. That looks right. Looks very, very right. Man, look at that. It spins, whoops, can't spin it that far. Or your nut drops out. <laughs> Nobody nice likes their nut to drop out. Look at that. Like nobody's business. So I got a couple washers here. Well, of course. We're gonna have to modify them. So let me do that right quick. It won't fit between the compounds, so well that one will. Ain't that something? One side fits good and the other one doesn't. So what I'll do is I'll just grind that little edge down there. So let me do that. I'll bring you right back. All right. So we went back to the grinder and we took a washer and we ground a flat in it. Trying to get all this grease off. Jeez, it was looking good. All right. And uh, we ground a flat in it. So now it should fit and it does. And um, make, sure, make sure you put your purdy side up, you know. Washer's got a side too. So, I'll never forget when I first started at Freightliner, um, an old man said, hey, I was putting those washers on wrong. And I said, what do you mean I'm putting them washers on wrong? And he said, well, there's a flat side and a round side and make everything look the same, you put the round side showing. And uh, you don't think about it till you're told, you know, and then you start looking at stuff. The, that's the flat side and that's the round side. And it's become a habit now. I've always put the, put the uh, round side out. So now we'll put the nuts on. I probably could have got by with two inch ones of these, but oh well. One was two and a half and the other one was two. So like I said, I still want to find some grade, uh, grade eight carriage bolts. I don't even know if they make them, so. But at least now it shouldn't fall out. And look at that thing. That's the way it's supposed to work. 
That's the way it's supposed to work. I'm loving it. And oilers here. I have a little um, oil oiler, spring-loaded oiler there that 20 weight goes into. And then I got this little plug here, and this adjusts the nut, the compound nut that's down underneath it. So the tension on it, of course, you know, we'll, we'll adjust all that stuff when it's on the lathe. But this goes right here. And that screwdriver, man, I'm going to have to put a homing beacon on that thing. So it goes right here. At first I thought that was an oil hole, but there's an Allen head that corresponds to it that's in the, on that compound down below it on the, nut, on the nut that's for the screw, and it's the adjusting nut for that. So that's that. That's that. All right. Let's turn this here. It's not higher than the... Uh, no. I don't know why that would be in the way there, but... I can't imagine why they just homemade one instead of, you know, the one, those other ones. All right, now, how did this go together? Remember, George, remember. Pretty sure this went on here. It's not threaded, so put some oil here. Put some oil here. And my brother took the uh, handles because, you know, both the handles were broken, so... Come on now. There you go. There we go. That spins nice now. And um, oh, that looks good. That goes on there. And then this goes on here. Of course, you know me, I'm going to put some, uh, I am going to put some anises on threads. I always have until tell, someone tells me the reason why I shouldn't, I'm going to keep on doing it. All I know is I can get my stuff apart a year later, so if I ever have to. And I never have to worry about a lawnmower blade seizing up, so I'm going to do it. Look at that. That's why I put anti-seize on stuff. That goes in like nobody's business. The friction lock. Look at there. And it's locked too buddy oh yeah I like it I like it a lot alrighty there we go like I said my brother's got the uh, has got the uh, handle with him what are the chances of getting this thing lined back up oh it's slim to none maybe he didn't leave many threads out there Anyway, the brass nut or acorn nut goes on there to hold the handle on. So there we go. One compound assembled, ready to go on. So that's going to the table in the back. All right. I think that'll do it. Um, wait on my brother to get the handle. And then that's the last thing. I don't want to have to run a tap in the acorn nut, buy another acorn nut, or check the threads on this other end. I know, you know, if you've ever watched A-Bomb's videos, you know, he always tells you to chamfer that edge before you thread it. Now you know why. Because, man, getting that first thread started on something that hasn't been is a booger. Not going to lie. So, either way, we'll, we'll get it. Um, so, that's ready to go. Works like a champ. Everything, you know, works exactly like it should. Um, it spins really good. Surprisingly good. So, no hard spots. Um, very happy with it. So we'll keep on keeping on. Um, we'll work on some other stuff next. Um, let's see, what will we do next? Pro oh, tail stock. Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to uh, start needle scaling on the big lathe. That's what we're going to do. Um, needle scale on the big lathe. I'm not going to record any of that because I'm not going to be happy doing that stuff. It's aggravating, dirty work. So. You saw me do it on the little stuff, so that's what we're gonna, you know, that's what we're gonna focus on there. Um, so we're gonna needle scale that thing and get it ready to go and get it painted. Um, and then we're just gonna keep on doing individual components. Once they're all completed, um, we're gonna start putting them back on the lathe. Um, we got a, you know, a couple of things we wanna make. 
um, the end cap had two oil covers like this one. I sandblasted this one. I need another one just like it. Or we're going to make two. I might draw it up in Fusion, in AutoCAD Fusion's 360. It's what I use now for 3D stuff. Um, draw this up and send it off to a machine shop, you know, maybe see if they'll machine it for me. Um, there's some online places like that. Maybe I can get some YouTube guys to do it. Who knows? We'll see. But I need a couple of those, and I'd like to have one like that. Or, you know, we could, the oil part is raised up out of here, which looks cool. I'm not going to lie. It looks really cool. But it's not going to hurt if it's engraved into the metal either. So we can make this thickness in the metal and do it there. It's just two swing away covers that go to the oil cups on the end of the gearbox. So, but I, I'd really like to have those on there. Um, one of the labels, the speed label is, is some kind of pop metal, my brother said. I mean, it is fragile. I don't think it's gonna make the, I don't think it's gonna live. I'm gonna do my best to get it put on there. Uh, might have to just use some 3M tape to hold it on there. It's, uh, it's pretty fragile. There's no way I don't wanna to try to stick those pins back into it. So, anyway. That'll do it for tonight, I believe. So until next time, see ya.